Not a lot of people know this, but there's a hidden language that your computer and software use to perform tasks. Until not too long ago, this language spoken by computers and software was a complex jumble of elaborate words, much like a Shakespearean play. These complex, intricate, and polysyllabic words made up the vocabulary, or instruction sets, that guided software in telling hardware what to do. But then, in the 1980s, David Patterson and John Hennessy, two computer science pioneers, posed a simple yet very controversial question. What if computers could be made to speak in a simpler, more efficient language, one made up of short and easy monosyllabic words? It was a bet that sparked heated debates, but eventually reshaped the entire tech landscape that we now take for granted. This is the story of reduced instruction set computers, or RISC. Here's what you need to know. The central processing unit, or CPU, is the brain of your computer. Whenever you run a program on your laptop or smartphone, the CPU gets a list of instructions from the software so it can direct other parts of your computer to work together and perform a task. However, a CPU cannot directly interpret high-level programming languages like Python or Java that people use to write software. Instead, a translator known as a compiler converts this code into a simpler machine language that the CPU can understand. The machine code defines a set of individual instructions, which can be very primitive, such as adding or subtracting two numbers or verifying if a number is equal to zero. However, a computer can perform complex tasks such as running a video game or playing a YouTube video by executing these simple operations billions of times per second. All the commands for a CPU and machine language are grouped in what computer scientists refer to as an instruction set. This is the lowest level of programming for a computer where all the hard work is performed. So when software talks to hardware, it speaks a, in a vocabulary, it has vocabulary. Now the technical term for that vocabulary is instruction set. So the words the, of that vocabulary are like the, the buttons on a calculator, is add, subtract, multiply, really simple instructions like that. So the kind of the debate within the field was how sophisticated should the vocabulary be? And before my colleague John Hennies and I started working on it, the conventional wisdom is that you wanted a very sophisticated, a very complex uh, vocabulary. Uh, like you can think of it like lots of polysyllabic words. And uh, John and I thought that uh, a vocabulary instruction set for microprocessors, it would be better to have a lot of simple words, short words like monosyllabic words. So then what the, the debate was about, because it was very controversial, well, which is better? And it, when uh, you can think of a program as reading a page of a book. And so it might take fewer words if you use sophisticated words, lots of syllable words, it might take fewer words, but it might be slower to read. And if instead you had a lot of simple words, it might be more, the book might be longer, but you might be able to read a lot faster. So the question was, uh, which, which is better? Conventional wisdom dictated that these instruction sets or vocabularies should comprise complex and powerful instructions. Instead of just add, subtract, multiply, divide, and the other simple operations typical of RISC, these complex instruction sets computers, or CISC, would use polynomials, sorting algorithms, and other cumbersome mathematical operations and commands. Patterson was part of the camp that believed a better way to build microprocessors, which were getting faster and faster each year in line with Moore's law that says the number of transistors in a microprocessor doubles every two years, was to use a RISC architecture. The idea is that although you'd have to perform more instructions than a CISC microprocessor, computing would be made more efficient overall by simply running those instructions much faster. The benefits of this trade-off were not at all immediately obvious, though. In fact, the debates were quite fierce, with critics being very vocal about the dangers of risk. They considered it an inferior architecture that would set back the industry and make software worse for everyone. And while some peers acknowledged the technical merits of risk, they were unconvinced by the economics. 
Virtually all computers at this time were CISC, so switching to a radically new computer architecture was seen as too risky, like deciding to change the railroad track gauge overnight. Remarkably, during these still early days of personal computing, much of the critique was based on tastes and hunches, in contrast to the quantifiable approach of Patterson and Hennessy. The two computer scientists wrote a now iconic textbook in the late 1980s called Computer Architecture, a Quantitative Approach, which revolutionized the field and provided some of the first groundwork for actually measuring and benchmarking the performance of various computers. Even more than 30 years later, the book is still relevant, despite the tremendous jumps in technology since the first edition. We still do get people uh, coming up to us, thanking us for writing the book and how it changed their lives. And, uh, you know, it was very important in, in their careers. Uh, I, I even had a student recently said, you know, uh, I was in the hospital for a month, and so I read your textbook like a novel <laughs> from cover to cover. Eventually, the quantitative approach enabled computer scientists to assess numbers from the hardware and compiler that tell you how well your computer does given the instruction set. At the end of the day, the way you measure the performance is how long it takes a program to run on a computer. And RISC came out king as far as the number of instructions per clock cycle goes. Hard data had convinced the naysayers. It took a while to figure out the end of the story, but you know, John and I were right, basically. It was about three or four times faster. You read about 25% more words if they were simple, but you could read them five times faster. So the net effect was factors of three or four. So what was the side effect of this and how does this affect everyday people? <laughs> well, uh, it, it, once uh, kind, of, kind of because software is shipped in these vocabularies, the software that ran on personal computers had this older uh, complex instruction set, you know, polysyllabic instruction set. And so that pretty much dominated the, the PCs. However, when the smartphones came along and the iPads came along, uh, they weren't, uh, there was a new software, set of software, so they were willing to try a new instruction set. And since we had this advantage of factors of three or four, they decided to use uh, this alternative, the reduced instruction set or risk approach. And so now every, you know, 99% of all smartphones, 90% 90 of all iPads all use reduced instruction set computers and 99% of Internet of Things or 100% of Internet of Things, they all use the reduced instruction set computers. So uh, it took, a, it was very controversial in the beginning, but 40 years later, it, you know, RISC dominates all, all computers that most people use. RISC V, the future of computing. Virtually all computers operating today are based on one of two instruction set architectures. The first is the CISC-based x86. Most desktops, laptops, and servers run on x86 processors from Intel or AMD. Although x86 is technically a CISC architecture, Intel has made many impressive innovations over the years that break down instructions into smaller, simpler, risk-like internal operations called micro-ops. For this reason, in today's world, RISC and CISC are no longer the black and white distinction they might have once been. You can say that most CPU architectures have evolved to different shades of gray. The other popular instruction set architecture is ARM, meant for RISC microprocessors, which dominates Android and iOS devices, as well as newer Apple computers. All the smartphones in the world run on ARM, as well as all the networked sensors and devices that run on the so-called Internet of Things. Both x86 and ARM are proprietary instruction sets, meaning developers need to pay a fee to use these architectures in their hardware. But now, there's RISC-V, the fifth generation of RISC architecture developed at UC Berkeley more than 10 years ago. Unlike other ISAs, RISC-V is completely free and open, so developers don't need to pay a licensing fee. This is a game changer in an industry where proprietary architectures have long held sway. Without the burden of licensing fees, manufacturers can produce cheaper hardware. This could lead to more affordable smartphones, laptops, and even data centers, making technology more accessible to people worldwide. This flexibility is particularly beneficial for emerging technologies like the Internet of Things, IoT, 
and artificial intelligence, where specialized hardware can make a big difference. Risk v is already making waves in the tech industry. Companies like Google, Samsung, and Qualcomm are exploring its potential, and it's becoming increasingly popular for embedded systems. Those tiny computers inside everything from your car to your washing machine. Next time you casually scroll through your smartphone or ask Siri a question, remember. The effortless speed you experience is thanks to a computing language revolution one that dared to simplify the complex and, in doing so, changed the world. Thanks so much for watching until the end. Be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more of our original science journalism. This is ZME Science signing off. Until next time, stay curious and keep questioning.